Hello and welcome everybody to this Azure Signups Espresso. I'm joined here by Thomas again, which means we're going to talk about OpenAI. Remember our last, last video where we talked about uh, introducing sentiment analysis inside Azure Signups using OpenAI GPT-3. Today we're going to talk about a different topic. We're going to talk about data cleansing and how to do more text-based data cleansing instead of a rule-based or writing a function. We're going to show you how to use OpenAI and ChatGPT to take care of that for you. So. Thomas, what are we going to do today? How are we going to do it? What is the use case? So go ahead. Yeah, so in it, last time we spoke about um, Sinus Park and how we can integrate Azure and OpenAI inside of it. Today, we're going to go a step further. We're gonna check out a specific use case, very typical for, for uh, data engineering, data cleaning. Now, first off, um, a small thing, don't go and throw away all of your Spark code um, Take a look at it as an additional tool that you can use for data cleaning. It has the advantage of understanding natural language. So if you have use cases where it is very difficult to put everything into code, you can try and use GPT for it. But okay, I was thinking, what can we use for this video? And where do we have really dirty data that we can work with? Um, the one place where we have no control over the input of an end user is pen and paper. And in Europe, we have such a thing standardized. We have documents that you have to fill in whenever you have a car accident. People fill it in and just imagine that you have a use case. You take those documents, you OCR them, and we take that data as an input, talking about some dirty data. OK, great. So let's have a look at how it works. Yeah, let's first dive into the playground of OpenAI. Perfect. So starting off, here we are at my Azure OpenAI service, cognitive service. And if we go to explore, it will open up our Azure OpenAI Studio. Here we are in our Azure OpenAI Studio. You can fetch some examples over here, but what we want to use is the GPT-3 playground. And believe me, when I say it's a playground, it's a real playground. Once you start working with it, you're going to lose track of time. Um, I already prepped an example. I put it over here. So what are we going to do? I created a prompt and I'm telling it, OK, convert the date to the date, month, year format. I'm using the few shot approach. So I'm giving it some examples on how to do it. So for example, he knows that 24 uh, relates to 2024, not 1924. 13 is uh, the day, 12 is the month. Here we have another example where I start with the year and the month and the day and show again how it is done. I provide some input, might be my birth date, turned 30 recently. And when I click on generate, we get the formatted date. But now let's switch to our Synapse workspace and show you how to use this inside of Synapse Park. Okay, first step, here we see that I run a different notebook. In this notebook, and I will show you, I just have four functions, date prompt, time prompt, address prompt, and country prompt. And the only thing that they do is they create the prompt. The prompt is um, the text that we will send to OpenAI, to GPT, and where it will respond to. Um, if we take a look at the date prompt, here you can see, um, here you can see the example. And I've done a similar thing for time. So converting time to a 24 hour notation extracting some data from an address. And lastly, uh, for standardizing purposes, we have a lot of country names. People can fill it in themselves, different languages, and we're gonna convert it to an ISO alpha two code. Returning to our original notebook. And here we see a lot of similar things as we had the previous time. We still have to define our variables, variables as in, what is my OpenAI service? What is my model deployed or the model that I'm going to use? And I'm going to fetch the API key as well from my key vault. Continuing just like previous time, I'm loading in CSV file in the data frame. And here you can see the file or the data from the file. I have some random addresses, again, generated with ChatGPT. I have some countries, some are in the native language, some are in English. Here you have a dot. 
I have some dates. Everyone fills in dates in their own way. And sometimes, sometimes slots. Um, some using AM, PM, others already using the 24 hour notation. Okay. Um, let's now take a look over here. Sorry. Here we use the user-defined user function that we created previously in the other notebook. The thing we're actually going to do is we provide, we give the column and it will return to us the prompt that we will uh, send to the, um, to, the open, to the Azure OpenAI service. Here you can see the example. And next up, just like in previous video, same thing, we are importing the Azure OpenAI uh, completion coming from Synapse ML, the open source library. And now we're going to define four OpenAI completion clients because we each time have to define the column that contains our prompt that we are going to send to Azure OpenAI. And we also have to define the error column and the output column. And this is different. We have four different columns, so we define four clients. Next up, we are gonna put everything into data frames, we're gonna transform the data, and completely at the end, we're going to cache it just for performance reasons. And if we take a look at the result, this is our result set. We have some data and it extracts everything in the JSON object as I requested. We have the different countries, everything put in a two letter code. And then we still have the dates all transformed in a standardized format. And then lastly, we have the time slots and everything is standardized as well in a 24 hour notation. Awesome. That basically means that we can now just clean sort of columns that we have in our data frames uh, using just a text-based approach, just saying like, hey, look in this field, show me what's inside and um, actually clean it this way just by writing text and not writing code. It's really interesting if you can use it for um, difficult data that you can, might have like a free form that people are entering where it's really hard to do that data cleansing. Um, you can also uh, remove some basic functionality as well uh, by replacing some Spark code um, using that prompt, but there's a catch. Yeah, always make sure don't replace all of your Spark code. Spark code will probably still outperform the GPT-3 uh, models, so take that into account. Okay, great. So it's basically another tool that you can use to do your data exactly. cleansing. It's enabling you to use the full power that you have right now with GPT-3 and uh, put it into your ETL process. Um, if this was the first time you're visiting us and you liked our video, just give us a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more content like this or other topics that are related to signups, just subscribe to that channel. Uh, we've got loads of content here, loads of playlists. Uh, and if you've got any question or any remarks or uh, you want to see something else that we do with uh, with ChatGPT, uh, no, not ChatGPT, with OpenAI, <laughs> Uh, just write it into the comments and we'll definitely get back to you. As always, from the Azure Sign of Society team, this is Stan. This is Thomas. Bye. Bye.